So here's a biopsychosocial model. And here you can use this slide to teach the clients the cycle of depression. Many times you have clients who think that depression is their fault, that they should just suck it up and get over it. Well, this cycle really shows them that there are so many things that can go into creating depression and that it really isn't their fault, that there are a lot of environmental factors as well as internal factors that can lead to depression. So on the very left side, you have the arrow that says thoughts and feelings. These are negative thoughts, low self-esteem, and sadness. This relates directly to the thoughts part of the cognitive behavioral model. On the bottom arrow, you have behavior. Again, another important component of the cognitive behavioral model. Behaviors that can lead to depression are withdrawal, decreased activities, and productivity. So what CBT does is tries to change these two arrows, tries to change your thoughts and feelings, and tries to change your behaviors to get you out of this negative cycle. Of course, there are other problems that can also lead to depression besides thoughts and behaviors. There are physical problems like the one on the right side arrow. There's pain, low energy, poor concentration, or alcohol drug use that can really lead to some significant physical problems. Finally, you have the top arrow, which are other environmental stressors, such as illness, work, or family issues. So as you can see, there are all these different things that can create the cycle of depression. So how do you break out of it? You have to start somewhere, and cognitive behavioral therapy teaches you how to start with your thoughts and your behavior. So just to review, the cycle of depression shows that both life stresses and medical problems can cause a depletion of certain chemicals in the brain. This chemical imbalance results in some common symptoms of depression, like sleep problems, appetite problems, a loss of energy, loss of concentration, and chronic pain. But here's the good news. This downward cycle can also be reversed with meds and coping skills so that you can begin to sleep better, feel more energetic, socialize more, and think less negatively. Another important part of activating and educating the client is to emphasize points that usually cause clients' concerns. Many clients believe that they're the only ones who are feeling the way they do, that nobody else understands how they're feeling, and that this is just a hopeless idea that they can actually get better from depression. So you really want to emphasize some points that usually cause clients these concerns. So it's important to reinforce to the client that depression is very common. In fact, one in 15 people who see a primary care physician meet diagnostic criteria for depression. And that's diagnostic criteria. So there's actually a lot more people who have subclinical problems with depression, or at least have transitional problems with depression. Depression can cause a wide spectrum of symptoms. So if they're feeling like, wow, I don't really know why my depression is causing me to gain weight or to not sleep well, well, depression is something that's very overarching to everything else that they're doing. And so reassuring them that this is normal for somebody who's feeling depressed will likely help them a little bit. Depression affects the body, behavior, and thinking, including changes in sleep and appetite, fatigue, aches and pains, decreased social interaction, and negative thoughts. And these are just a few of the symptoms that they can cause. And so it's really good for clients to understand how depression can really be so widespread in terms of their daily lives. Another thing that takes away the stigma of depression, as many people feel that there's a huge stigma to having a mental health illness, is that depression is actually a medical illness. There are actually neurotransmitters that change when you're depressed. And so this is not a character defect or a weakness. And really helping the client explore these ideas and helping them to understand that this is a medical illness is really helpful and that these symptoms are real and they're not imagined. So making sure to discuss stigma in your education of the client. People become depressed for a lot of different reasons. Some of the reasons include um, family stressors, life stressors, as we talked about in the cycle of depression, thoughts and feelings and behaviors. And so letting them know that everybody's experience of depression is different. Recovery is a role and it's not the exception. Most people from depression can recover and depression can almost always be treated. The aim of treatment is complete remission of symptoms and improvement in functioning. There is a high risk of recurrence, and so this is a good thing to tell the clients about because sometimes after they come out of treatment and they start to feel depressed again, they feel like they're a failure. Wow, I went to treatment for four months and here I am having these same symptoms again, what's wrong with me? Well, there's a very high risk of recurrence in depression. 50% re occur after one episode, and somebody who's had two episodes of depression are likely to relapse 70%, and there's 90% if you've had three episodes. So these risks of recurrence are very high. But these recurrences can be avoided or minimized with good care. 
So cognitive behavioral therapy is really aimed at teaching clients skills that they can use for the rest of their life so that when they start to feel a little depressed again, they can hopefully go into their repertoire, into their toolkit, and find something that works for them that helps them get out of that cycle of depression a lot quicker. And increasing pleasurable activities among people with depression will improve the mood and is a huge goal of cognitive behavioral therapy. So let's review the five steps of assessment of clients who might have depression. The first step we discussed is to screen depression with PHQ. The client health questionnaire is a nine item questionnaire and at this point you're really just screening for significant symptoms of depression, not making a diagnosis. At the second step, you are going to diagnostically evaluate for depression and also at the same time evaluate for important co-occurring disorders such as mania, um, suicidal ideation and attempts, and um, a couple of other things such as alcohol abuse and drug abuse. At the third step, you're going to determine the client's treatment needs. This is where you want to ask them all the different types of questions about their treatment history. What types of medications have they been on previously? What types of medications are they on now? Have they ever gone to psychotherapy? Are they receiving psychotherapy now? And also at this stage, you want to think about whether or not the client has other acute needs that might require in immediate intervention, such as inadequate nutrition or psychotic symptoms. At step four, this is where you develop the client's treatment plan. This is where you decide what type of treatment you want to use with this client given their problems. Is cognitive behavioral therapy a good idea? Do you want to use cognitive behavioral therapy in adjunct with something else? Or do you want to use something else altogether? And at the fifth step, this is very important because at this step you're trying to empower the client through activation and education. Let them know that depression is common, that they're not the only ones who are experiencing these problems, discuss the stigma of mental health illness, discuss with them their treatment options, and let them know what the ideas of recurrence are and how they can prevent it with good care. That's all we'll do today, and at the next session, we're going to be looking at the Bright Manual, which is a cognitive behavioral therapy treatment program. Thank you for joining us.